Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to give you a quick wrap up of the books that I read in the Tis the Damn Readathon. This was a Taylor Swift inspired readathon that's run through March. There are about eight lovely hosts that put this together for us. I found it through Emma's channel, Drinking By My Shelf. There were three prompts per Taylor Swift album, uh, two that involved reading a book and one that was not reading related for you to do, for you to choose from. And this has been so much fun. I went into this thinking I'm only going to read maybe four or five books and I'll do all the extra little prompts, like have a dance break and that. In the end, I ended up reading a book per album. Um, and it was just really good. I've had a really good reading month and I love Taylor Swift, so this was absolutely fab. So thank you so much to those of you who organised this. But I've got my notes in front of me now and I'm going to tell you the books that I read. So for the album reputation, I chose the prompt, uh, read a book that was recommended to me. And my dad recommended Psychic Protection by William Bloom. And this is um, basically aimed at people that are sensitive to other people's energies and how to sort of manage that. In places I found it really good, in places I found it really heavy, um, but there were a lot of techniques and things to try. So if that appeals to you, I would recommend that book. Now I started off the readathon with the album 1989, which I chose the prompt read a book with a number in the title. And I read 13 Reasons Why. Now I had no idea what to expect with this. I knew that it was a book that ended up as a Netflix series, but I didn't know anything about it. I've not watched it. So I really kind of went into this a bit blind, but it's about a girl who commits suicide and she leaves audio tapes explaining why she committed suicide and these get sent to all of the people that had a part to play in her death. So we follow Clay, um, who went to school with her, and he's listening to the tapes and you're finding out what happened, who was responsible, how he was involved. I read this in a couple of nights. I found this a really gripping read. It was YA, but it was just, it was really, really good. It really just, it, it gripped me and I couldn't wait to keep going. So I would really recommend that if you were looking for... Something that's just a little bit intriguing, a bit thrillery, but nothing too heavy. Um, and now I can't wait to go and watch the Netflix series. So next one, Folklore. I read a book based on mythology, and I read one of my Christmas presents, which is Unicorns. And I got this from a really good friend of mine for Christmas, and it goes through all the history of unicorns, how they were mentioned in religions. I mean, I had no idea unicorns were mentioned in the Bible. It goes through how they sort of became like um, royal icons and things like that as well. So if you're a unicorn lover or no one, that I would I would really recommend that. The next one, lover, read a five star prediction. So my favourite author is Santa Montefiore, and she has just released Flappy Entertains. Now I'm not going to give away any spoilers. It was a really good book. I love the character Flappy because I lived in a tiny little village like I think it's mentioned in here and there were definite Flappies in that village and it was so funny. Um, it was a good book, it didn't make five star for me because I'm not going to spoil it but something happened and then all of a sudden it was a happy ever after and I'm thinking no that that wouldn't have happened in real life you don't hurt someone and then it'd be like yeah hey we're fine it's great so it was really really good up until about the last couple of chapters where it kind of just lost it for me but I understand why she ended it the way that she did but that's just my personal opinion fearless the album choose a book you're intimidated by it's the book thief I was just basically intimidated by its size. It's over 500 pages and I thought it's going to take me ages to read. Um, it didn't. It took me about a week, I suppose. But I love this book. It was very hard to read and it was quite upsetting. Um, but I love the fact that it was written as, with death as the narrator. And you keep having these like little definitions and little bullet points type things in it. Um, which sort of break it up so it's not that hard just to read, it's like 500 odd pages. 
it basically is about a young girl who steals books basically <laughs> um, back during the times of the Holocaust and yeah it's based in Nazi Germany and it was just I don't know I it was heavy as I said it was really upsetting um, I was a bit astonished actually because this had been recommended to a teenager and I mean a young teenager like 13 um, from their school to read and I think if I'd have read this when I was 13, I would have been really, really upset and found it really, really hard. But I'm pleased that I read it. It was really good. It does give you a bit of an idea of what Nazi Germany was like for young children in Germany. So, yeah, it was hard, but a good read. Next one, Evermore. I'll surprise yourself with a book. So I just had about a dozen laid out in front of me. I closed my eyes, span round, and then I just chose one. And I read The Untethered Soul. This came to me, this was the perfect read for me. I really have been struggling with mental health recently and I needed this book. So that just worked out so well. Um, and it's about basically your own relationship with your own thoughts and emotions and how to manage it. Um, so if you are maybe struggling at the moment, I would really, really recommend this book. Um, it's only a couple hundred pages, but it can get quite heavy in places but it really made me think so that that was a good book happy surprise read read a book with red on the cover i read switch bitch by roald dial this book was really weird so i didn't know until recently that he wrote adult books i thought he'd just written the likes of matilda charlie and the chocolate factory all these amazing children's books that i grew up with and i came across this on the internet and i'm like he wrote adult books so i ordered myself a couple and this has read on the cover so i was like okay i'll read this now this contained four short stories that had been published in playboy i believe and so they obviously they were of a bit of a sexual nature there was nothing too overtly sexual basically it was just that things had happened it was implied that they'd happened and it was just so funny and it was just so weird reading this kind of content from this author that I just didn't expect it from but I've got a few more books of his and I can't wait to get into it that was just it was a mind-blowing thing for me to sit down and read that thinking this is not the same person that wrote George's Marvelous Medicine. Right, Speak Now, uh, a book as a movie adaptation. I chose If I Stay. I've not seen the movie. Um, I don't know if I want to, purely because obviously it's quite an upsetting book. I tried it a couple of times. I DNF'd it after about 20 pages, but I was determined to persevere, and I'm pleased that I did. And basically, it's about a girl who's been involved in an accident, and she's sort of like between worlds at the moment. She can see her body, she can see people visiting her, and I suppose she doesn't really know whether to go to heaven or whether to stay on earth, and, and basically at the end you find out her choice, but it was actually quite an upsetting read. Um, again, maybe not the best one to read when you're not feeling brilliant, but if you want an emotional, tear-jerking book, then, then pick up this book. Okay, teenager, whole life ahead of her, deciding whether to live or die. It's not going to be an easy read. Taylor Swift, the album, read a book about music. I read a book that has actually been on my TBR for so long. And that is Jessie J, it's nice to meet you. This is her story. I was obsessed with Jessie J when she first came out. I was such a big fan. So I have a couple of books like this. Um, and this was a perfect time to sit down and read it. And it was really easy to read because, as you can see, it's not heavy text. Um, there's a lot of pictures and things. But um, it was just quite interesting, really. Just different stories from about her tours and things like that and about her family. It was it was cute. I had actually... So that actually ticked off all the different albums. And we had the blank space option, um, which I thought I'll read a book from in case I couldn't find a book to fulfil another prompt. So I read a Christmas book and I read The Gift and this really hit home to me. You follow basically this workaholic who basically keeps going to work over his family and basically an intervention needs to be made. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it but 
it hit home to me because my partner and I, we are workaholics and we work on every occasion basically. And yeah, it was it was an eye opener to me because you're right, basically your work could end tomorrow, but your family is still going to be there. So really, what's what's more important in the grand scheme of things? So yeah, um, so yeah, if you want a heavy Christmas book, I'd really recommend it. Um, it was it was really good actually, and I'd never re read a Cecilia Ahern book before, um, and I like her writing style. So I know she's written other books, which I will try and pick up. But they're the books that I read for the Tis the Damn Readathon. Thank you again to the organisers. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you do something like this again. So I'll speak to you soon, guys. Bye.